As Africa navigates its post-war lab development, nutrition is key to advancing health and economic resilience. The UN-led Scaling Up Nutrition Sun Movement is working to realign strategies and also boost investment. I spoke earlier to Afshan Khan, that is the UN Assistant Secretary General, at the sidelines of the Africa Food Systems. Let us listen into that conversation. The Sun Movement, as a movement, is really composed of four critical entities. It's led by national governments in 66 countries and four Indian states. 42 of those countries are in sub-Saharan Africa. It brings together government, small and micro-medium enterprise, MSMEs, through GAIN and WFP, and it consists of development partners as well as the UN agencies. So as a movement, it's really designed to support nutrition interventions across different pillars. And the two critical pillars that are so relevant here, one is the agricultural transformation and food systems, and the other is the health systems and social protection. So these pillars we see are critical. When it comes to post-Malibu, what we're really doing is supporting countries in sub-Saharan Africa to identify what are their clear targets and what are going to need to be some of the domestic financing investments that need to be made from domestic budgets. On the broader scale, globally, the Sun Movement is supporting alongside other partners, working very closely with the World Bank on their investment framework for nutrition. And that investment framework will really identify what are the global needs to invest in nutrition. So for Sun's financing work, we're supporting countries to identify what are the domestic resources that are needed? What are some of the international development partners? What can they bring in through aid? What are some of the uh, investments that would be needed from the multilateral financial institutions? And really clearly identifying, particularly in the area of micro, small, and medium enterprises, which as we heard today, produce 85% of Africa's food, what kind of investment do they need through the Sun Business Network to transform agricultural systems so that we're producing healthy, nutritious food on the continent that leads to better outcomes, human capital development, and better quality food production? And from the financial perspective there, uh, Afshan, what investment mechanisms or funding strategies do you believe are most critical when it comes to scaling up investments or scaling up nutrition in initiatives across Africa? And also what role can we see or should we see government playing here? Maybe I'll take the example of Rwanda as the host country for this, um, this summit for food systems in Africa, as well as the Scaling Up Nutrition Global Gathering that'll be held in November. Rwanda has very clearly identified as part of its national transformation strategy that um, nutrition is one of the key pillars. They've also identified what are the domestic budget investment needs for their agricultural sector, and they've costed nutrition across different parts of their sectoral strategy, whether it's agriculture, whether it's um, health, whether it's social protection, or whether it's um, industry and commerce. So we clearly see a whole of government approach to costing what can come from domestic budget, where do they need development partners to come in with grant financing, and where can they seek from the international financial institutions loans to augment both their investment in nutrition outcomes and their investment overall in the food sector. And also, away from the government, we also have the financial institutions playing a key role here when it comes to coming up with budgets for scaling up nutritional aspects here. But let us look at some of the innovative approaches that we are seeing or that have shown promise in improving nutrition outcomes here, you know, particularly in incomes with high rates of, uh, with, you know, high rates of food insecurity and also malnutrition. So, and how also these can be scaled up effectively. What are we seeing here? So, look, one of the key points we're seeing is that almost half of young child deaths are still caused by malnutrition. 
So that means we need really strong nutrition interventions in the health sector budget. And that means both from the national level down to the cell level, to use Rwanda's example, but community health work care workers being paid clearly by government budgets to invest in nutrition outcomes. The second, and there's been a lot spoken about today, is the need for investment through the private sector into micro, small, and medium enterprises to produce healthy, quality, nutritious food. So the Sun Business Network has well over 1,500 small and medium enterprises that form part of the movement, identifying who's investor ready, where can they get the capital in a sustainable way to scale up their businesses, to adapt to new markets, to bring in digital technologies, to transform what's being produced on the continent so it is healthy and nutritious is key. And then lastly, I would say Africa produces so much of the fresh fruits and vegetables. How do we make sure we don't see food loss and waste? And we're clearly seeing investments from producer to the plate, to the table. And that means distribution capacity, storage capacity, support to women vendors, and the right kind of agricultural subsidies so that we're supporting the things that we want to see grow on the continent, and we're supporting the distribution of that food at an affordable price, so that neither the farmers are suffering from malnutrition, and nor are the consumers. And that's a win-win for those producing food, but it's also a win for the consumers of food, and particularly supporting women and youth in that production and consumption.